and hope that no more rain falls. Good evening, I'm Bill Francis. And I'm Susan Sweeney. Flash flooding in the city claimed the life of a Louisville woman this afternoon. Fire department divers searched this submerged car after the driver was found dead inside and pulled out of the water. Dennis Reisinger discovered the victim about 3.15 today when he went swimming in the flood water. Her, so I tried to pull her out, but she was right around the seatbelt. And so the other two guys helped pull her out and put her where she's at. Carol Winfrey helped pull 51-year-old Willie Mae Marshall from the car. He believes she was trapped earlier when the water was lower. But I see it went down when the water, earlier this morning when the water was very low and she stalled out. And what happened is the car just flood, the water just flooded her. And she didn't know what to do in panic because she was twisted in her seat belt and everything. The coroner says Marshall was on her way to work when she apparently got caught in the rising water and drowned shortly before noon. An autopsy will be performed tomorrow. Divers found no other victims. A 14-year-old boy died today after he was struck by lightning while hanging tobacco in a Shelby County barn. Jeffrey Wappen was in the Christianburg barn with his father and grandfather when the lightning struck. The father, Joseph Wappen, was admitted to Jewish Hospital in Shelbyville. The grandfather, Billy Smith, was treated and released. Both men were suffering from shock. In Louisville tonight, most of the waters from the flash flooding have receded, but the cleanup is only beginning. Locally, most problems were caused by sewers unable to handle the sudden heavy rain. Harry. The problem started almost as soon as the heavy rain settled over the city this morning. The creek through these apartments off Peabody Lane quickly spilled over its banks, flooding many units. By that time, something broke. You heard something go boom. I thought maybe the wall cracked and water just started gushing in. The wall busted, you know, from the people's apartment next door. And everything was just, it just happened so quick. You know, the water rushed in so quick. I just lost everything. City officials call this the worst flooding in many years. Between three and six inches of rain fell in just a couple hours. Even parts of the U of L campus flooded. At Brandeis and Cardinal Boulevard, 20 feet of water filled the viaduct under the railroad bridge. There also was water in 21 buildings, including the new student center and the university club. This sort of flooding was found all over the city. MSD says it simply was more water than the system could handle. Our pump stations are all working. They're just working against a lot of pressure, and, and the lowest elevations have just accumulated most of this, this storm. Off Taylor Boulevard, meanwhile, this was a common sight, flooded basement. Joe Jones lost everything when several feet of water filled his apartment. The storm sewer behind the house caused these problems, and nearby, the same sewer flooded June Ragsdale's basement. It uh, usually gets about halfway between the alley and my house, and then it fills up. You just gotta wait, wait till it goes down, and then begin to clean. You're getting pumps in. There's a row of pumping basements out. You gotta pull this electricity, cut the, le cut the power off. So if you don't cut the power, you got danger. Across Taylor Boulevard at Iroquois Homes, the basements of 49 of the 72 buildings were flooded. An hour after the rain ended, most water had receded, but MSD says the rising river now could be a problem. Uh, when the river comes up to certain elevations and when our system is full inland, that means we're going to have to activate flood pumping stations to start flood pumping into the Ohio River. Tonight, MSD says without any additional heavy rain this evening, the sewer system has been able to return to normal and the Ohio River is not expected to reach flood stage. One shelter has been shut, set up in Jefferson County for people unable to stay in their homes tonight. PJ Middle School on Rangeland Road. If you have any questions about getting shelter or help, call 561-3621, 561-3622, or after 11, 589-4450. As bad as it was in Louisville, it was even worse in many sections of southern Indiana. Rescue efforts are still underway in Scottsburg, about 20 miles north of Louisville. It's coming up rather quickly uh, still. It's, it's come up about four inches in the last, oh, I'd say, what, 15, 20 minutes that we've been out on the water. In Scottsburg late this afternoon, the rain finally stopped, but the water along State Road 56 continued to rise. Joyce Davis waited anxiously for help. She had taken a nap, and when she woke up, her home was surrounded by water. For almost an hour, she waited to be rescued. Finally, she and her car were brought out by volunteers. The water had come up about two feet from the time I laid down till I got up. You've never seen it like this before? Never. I've lived in that same spot 11 years, and I've never seen anything like it. Army reservists in large trucks assisted in the rescue efforts. Civilians in small boats also helped. 
There was concern about the condition of dams in watershed lakes. There's a couple uh, down here, uh, one on a, a housing addition, and they sandbagged it and stuff, so uh, it looks like it is going to hold. That's the one they were majorly concerned about. The others, the spillway seemed to be holding. The water rose so quickly in Henryville that boats had to rescue motorists trapped along flooded roads. The flash flooding stranded at least six families along Henryville's main street. How fast did the water come up this morning? It come up just right now. It just come right up. Boats were used to bring customers out of the local IGA. I'd say within a half hour it was up, up and getting in people's houses. You know, it just come up that fast. Nobody was ready for it, you know. I've got a father-in-law mother-in-law live down here, and uh, it came up so quick in their house that we had to take a boat back in and get them out. High water over Interstate 65 forced police to close a portion of the highway, causing a massive backup for more than seven miles. Indiana State Police say I-65 has now been reopened. Some parts of southern Indiana received as much as eight inches of rain this morning. Some homes tonight are still without electricity. At the height of this morning's storm, some 12,000 customers of Louisville Gas and Electric lost power. Tonight, LG&E reports 1,500 customers are still without service. The utility hopes to have everyone back online by noon tomorrow. Public Service Indiana says that power was restored to all of its customers. In the extent of damage to the hull, there also are no reports of oil on the water. The ship was traveling from Martha's Vineyard to New York. I think we had enough water around here to hold the QE2. <laughs> we could have probably floated it right down one of those uh, lakes that developed in Henryville. It was pretty extensive rainfall today. As a matter of fact, we had some uh, almost record rainfall for August. It was interesting to see that over the last couple of years, we haven't had a tremendous amount of rain in the month of August, but this year we had 3.12 inches today, officially, and the closest thing to that was uh, 1970, 3.05. So we're working our way into the top five Augusts with the most possible rainfall. Take a look at local radar now, and you will see that there's very little to report around the area. That's good news, because we certainly had enough of it today. What really happened early uh, this morning was that a, a large mesoconvective scale system, which is basically a giant thunderstorm, developed over uh, St. Louis, came eastward toward us, entered Terre Haute right up here where you see the HUF, came on down into this area and dumped a heck of a lot of rain, 3.12 inches. You can take a look at uh, when we said damp Saturday morning last night. You remember us talking about that? We didn't know quite how damp it was going to be, but boy, what a mess we had today satellite picture shows you exactly what happened. There it is developing, turning into a rather large green spot there, redeveloping again as the day went on, and then the trough system developed, which brought even more rain in this afternoon. I'll show you it sequentially, piece by piece. The first sign of trouble started right around St. Louis, moving eastward, and at about 11 o'clock last night, uh, people who were awakened in Terre Haute at about 3 a.m. knew there was trouble. There was a little storm system developing there with a pretty good punch to it, moving to the south-southeast, became a pretty big storm, as you can see there, circled, kind of looks like one of those sportscasters pens, doesn't it? Big storm here around the area, redeveloping again, close to Paducah and Evansville, moving on into the area, and then that trough system developed a few thunderstorms this afternoon, too. Here are those August record rainfalls we were talking about. The record for 24-hour precip, 3.78 inches, way back in 1897. Here's today. We are in the number four position right now for record August 24-hour rainfall. Almost incredible. Uh, take a look at stats from Standiford Field at this hour, 78 degrees, mostly cloudy, humidity still very high, a south wind at 6 miles per hour, pressure is rising at 30.01. Our high temperature today only reached 83 degrees, but boy did it feel muggy out there. A low this morning was 71 degrees, and we're not expecting a tremendous amount of precipitation to fall within the next two or three days, but boy, 3.12 inches for today is about enough. As you can see, that made a great contribution to the August total of 3.16 inches now, 28.47 for 1992. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our national radar, which shows you where the rain has still continued to fall. It's uh, not too tremendous amount right now falling in the area. A few scattered showers throughout the entire metropolitan reporting area. Temperatures tonight going to be a little bit more comfortable. They'll be falling into the 70s. But boy, there's some fog outside right now. We had a report from uh, one of our engineers that there was tremendous fog already developing in the New Albany area, so we suggest you drive very carefully if you are out. Improving weather tomorrow, looks like we'll be seeing a little bit of sunshine, and that's a good thing because we certainly had our share of the weather today as far as rain goes. Sunday highs will be temperatures mostly in the 90s. We'll see that continuing trend as a heat wave builds in over the next three or four days. 
but our first sign of returning rain shouldn't come till that Monday afternoon. And so for our forecast. Tonight, rain ending becoming partly cloudy and foggy, a low of 72 degrees. Tomorrow, a high of 91, partly cloudy, and the three H's, hazy, hot, and humid. Partly cloudy and muggy tomorrow night, 73 to low. Afternoon thunderstorms may be re-entering the area along a cold front by Monday. Thunderstorms will be likely, and that's when we're going to be looking for some more uh, probably bad rain situations on Tuesday. Isolated showers around the area on Wednesday. Quite warm temperatures throughout the next three or four days. Well, I guess that beautiful weather we had last week had to come to an end someday, but uh, we weren't counting on it like this today. All good things must come to an end, but we hope we don't get more of what we had today. Well, we'll take the afternoon thunder showers over the flooding like we had That's today right. anytime. Thank you, Tara. Next in sports, the Dream Team gets the gold. Tom Lane is in for Bob Rainey.